Hey guys, this is Voltage, and this is not Minecraft. This is Sid Meier Civilization V, Gods and Kings, and I thought I would try recording this. See how it turns out. So, let's get started. First of all, the last game I played for this I was playing as Siam, but for YouTube, I think I'm going to actually start as a random leader. I'm going to set the game to quick difficulty level Prince, which is standard difficulty level, map size standard, and continents. So let's see who I get to play as. All hail the most magnificent and magnanimous Empress Theodora, beloved of Byzantium and of Rome. From the lowly ranks of actress and courtesan, you became the most powerful woman in the Roman Empire, consort to Justinian I. Starting in the late 520s AD, you joined your husband in a series of important spiritual and legal reforms, creating many laws which elevated the status of and promoted equal treatment of women in the empire. You also aided in the restoration and construction of many aqueducts, bridges, and churches across Constantinople, culminating in the creation of the Agia Sophia, one of the most splendid architectural wonders of the world. Beautiful Empress, Byzantium is in need of your wisdom and strength. Her people are lost without your light to lead them. The Byzantine Empire may have fallen once, but its spirit is still intact, waiting to be reborn anew. Can you return Byzantium to the heights of glory it once enjoyed? Can you create a civilization to stand the test of time? Okay, so apparently I am going to be playing as the Byzantines. These guys, in my opinion at least, play similar to the Greeks in that their unit in that their land unit replacement is a cataphract, which is similar to a companion cavalry in my experience that you get as the Greeks, but it's slower and more powerful. And they also get this unique naval unit, the Droman, which is a trim replacement that is more powerful than normal. Their ability Patriarchate of Constantinople allows me to get an extra religious belief. So that's nice, and I guess I'll be playing a religious game. Eastern Roman Empire for the win. I hope. Okay. Wine and silver. And there are some cows over there for food. This actually looks like a pretty decent spawn. But, as always, move my warrior first, and Ancient Ruins! Yay, free stuff! From that, I think I will found Constantinople here. I like to start my games out with a monument, since that makes my border expand faster with culture. And... Let's see, for research, since the Byzantine special ability has to do with religion, I want to start generating faith as quickly as possible, so I'm going to research pottery so I can build a shrine. Move the warriors into the ruins, and... Excellent! They found spears! I now have a nice military advantage over anyone I run into. For those of you who are not familiar with Civ 5, this is my science gauge. That helps me research technology faster, like right now I'm researching pottery, which will give me granaries and shrines. This is money. This is my happiness. I want that to stay above zero. Golden Age Timer, which is set up by happiness. Culture, which helps me later. You'll find out what that does. I can't really explain it very well. And then Unique to Gods and Kings, which is an expansion pack. 
is the Faith Gauge, which lets me do religion-related things. So for now, I'm just wandering around. As for how this series will progress, I will keep playing until I win, or somebody else wins. And this little thing right here means somebody founded a pantheon, which is the precursor to a religion. You get that once you've generated a certain amount of faith. In this case, it is nine. It gets harder to make a pantheon the longer the game's been going on. The fact that somebody already is a pantheon on turn three tells me that either the Kel that the Celts are on the map because their ability is called Druidic Lore. If their city is next to a forest, they get faith points, meaning they can get a religion very quickly. And is that a border? Yes, it is. Hello to you too. I am going to get rid of you because you usually cause problems for me. I have apparently found China. And in my experience, China likes to get really friendly with me and then stab me in the back diplomatically. So I'm going to kill them. Okay. Hi. I have also apparently found Japan. That scares me because their ability makes their units fight at full strength when they're hurt. So it is very hard to stop them from killing me if they get a large enough force near my city. Okay, I just got a citizen. Just keep exploring. Ooh, more ruins. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it? What makest thou? Okay, I've just researched pottery. Also, sorry I was tapping my microphone. That probably made some weird audio. Though I may edit that out. Eh, free money. Not bad. I would have preferred free technology, but okay. Okay, since there's some silver right around me, let's research mining. So I can get that with a worker. Okay, my monument is done, so now I'm going to build a religious shrine. Which is weird, because my people don't have any religious faith, and I'm building a shrine? I am building a shrine to something that I don't know what it is. That makes sense. Let's go try to find Nobunaga. Or let's run into barbarians. Okay. Nobunaga has apparently found me. I'm going to attack this barbarian encampment because I want to get rid of it. Because if I don't get rid of it, it'll just keep making more and more barbarian units. And this thing is the social policy alert. When my culture reaches a level like this, I can adopt a social policy, which will give me whatever form of bonus. Right now, I'm going to go for honor social policies because those help me kill barbarians, and they make killing barbarians give me more culture. Now let's keep an eye on my city.
keep attacking. Adopting the honor social policy branch makes me also do more damage to barbarians. Normally, they get a combat penalty of 40%. The honor social policies increase that to 73%. The meat shall have so, it, yeah. but not its mineral rights. Okay, I've researched the mining. And this encampment's making more units. So I'm getting rid of it. Goodbye encampment. Thank you for the free gold and culture. Okay, now I'm going to research calendar so I can get that wine. Well, technically those are grapes, but I need to turn them into wine. And to do that, I get I need to get calendar so I can make a plantation. I will give these guys an open terrain combat bonus. And since killing these guys gives me culture, I'm going to kill them. Another pantheon has been founded, apparently. So now it costs 12 faith to make a pantheon. And, yeah. Let's charge across this river to attack the barbarians. And I've accumulated enough culture for another social policy. So, I'm going to take warrior code. Out of the honor social policy branch. That gives me a free Great General. This guy has no way to defend himself, but he increases the strength of my military units by 15% if he is near them while they're fighting. So he is useful, and also the social policy makes it so I make units faster. Well, combat units. Now I'm going to build a worker so I can actually turn some of these resources into useful stuff. And move my spearmen into the ruins. Evidence of recent activity reveals the location of nearby barbarian encampments. Yay! A useless ruin. Okay, that one is there. And that one is there. Not exactly useful information for me at the moment. Sure, I'll take your money for an embassy. World's busiest people. This ranks people based on the production they're generating. And I am apparently number five in the world out of eight. So I'm not doing so hot in the production department. City-state border and an encampment. Främling, välkommen till Snökungens rike. Jag är Gustav Adolf. Medlem av den aktade Vasaheten. Hello, Gustavus. He I am not actually scared of. Because if I am friends with him, I get a nice benefit. Thanks to his ability, which makes himself and his friends get extra great people. So I'm just going to let him hang around until he's a problem for me. Min vän. Yes, I will take your money. So and teach us I've to know our calendars. days, so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I think my spearman's in a pretty nasty situation right now. But I'm going to go ahead and research writing so I can get embassies with these people that are getting embassies with me. Good. 
Greetings, Hiawatha. I'm just going to let my spearmen sit here and heal for a bit. Though they're not doing that very well since they're standing out in the middle of nowhere. And I've met the city-state of Mombasa. These guys are not trying to win the game. They just give me nice stuff if I'm friends with them. And these barbarians are idiots. They walked out of their encampment. So I'm just going to walk in. And Mombasa fighting the barbarians. I don't care, really. Though this I care about, because now I can kill these guys to get culture and give Mombasa their worker back. So that now I am friends with Mombasa, meaning they will give me extra food. Because they are a maritime city state, as indicated by this little ship steering wheel. I don't know what those wheels are actually called. Shock 2. And I get more culture policies. Military tradition. Units get 50% more experience from combat. Yes, I like that. Let's stab barbarians! If you're wondering why I did that, it seems to make the turn timer go up faster. I don't know why. And I'm going to go ahead and kill this barbarian that's standing in Mombasa's territory. Because that will make Mombasa like me to the point where they are no longer just a friend, they are now my ally. Meaning now they give me even more food, and if I go to war with somebody, so will they. And my worker is done, so I'm going to put him up on this hill and start digging up silver. I'm also going to start building a granary, which will give me extra food. He who destroys a good book kills reason itself. Okay, now I can build libraries. Great. Have my workers start digging a mine so I can get that silver. And I've apparently generated enough faith to make a pantheon. based on the amount of silver right around here. I mean, look at this, there are four pieces of it right here. And there's a fifth one up here. I am going to go with... Where is that one? Please tell me it didn't disappear already. Okay. Religious beliefs are first come, first serve. Meaning if somebody else took something I want, I can't have it, but I got this, I'm getting this because I get extra culture and faith from each source of gold and silver, and there's a lot of silver right here, so that basically turns this stuff into faith generation for me, which will help me get to a full-fledged religion faster. And choose research. Let's get horses to show up on the map. I want him to just stand here and heal for a while. So, these next few turns are just going to be me clicking to keep going. 
Okay, Nabunaga is offering me a declaration of friendship. That means he does not want to kill me. So, I actually really like that. So, yes, let us work together. Of course, now he's going to be asking me for favors. But the other side of that is, I can ask him for favors. He wants to kill China. I kind of like that idea, but I'm not in the shape I'm not in shape to kill things at the moment, so give us 10 turns to prepare. Thou shalt husbandry. Since I'm going to war, I should probably get my ab get the ability to make spearmen instead of relying on just getting them from ruins. And actually, there's another city-state over here. So I'm going to walk over here and meet them. Rio de Janeiro, another maritime city-state. They have horses. That's useful, considering that my special unit requires horses. Okay, that silver mine is done, so I'm going to move over to this one. Well, this silver deposit and turn it into a silver mine. My influence with Mombasa has declared to the point where they're no longer my friend, but I don't really care at the moment. And... My granary is done. How long until I have my bronze working? Two turns? I'll get a couple points of production in on a library. That way I get tech faster. Okay, that makes me happy. My friend has the world's pointiest sticks. Which is military strength, approximately. Though, if this does not make me happy, I am a sudden duck. Okay, he wants free silver. He's my friend, so I will give it to him. Especially since I now have two sources of silver. With a spear 11 cubits long in his hand, the bronze point gleamed in front of him and was fastened to the shaft of the spear by a ring of gold. Okay, let's make a bunch of hectares. <laughs> this is officially the Iliad. Except with China instead of Troy. And change production from the library to spearmen. The production from building a library will stay there, meaning I'm not giving up on the library. It's just partially constructed. But if I'm going to war with China, I need to start making military units. And let's start chopping away at this forest so I can turn it into a silver mine. Also, clearing out the forest will give me a one-off boost to production. And these badly wounded barbarians are getting too close to my city, so my city is going to shoot them with arrows, even though I haven't discovered archery yet, and kill them. And that gave me a cultural overflow, so I get a policy. Discipline! Now if two of my units are standing next to each other, 
They get a 15% combat boost. And my workers have finished chopping down the forest. After the arrow. Which gave enough of a boost that my spearmen are ready to go. Meaning, Arminius, my general here, is now going to be helpful. Let's make another spearman. And I'm going to research trapping. Even though there's nothing to trap around here. But I need that to get the horseback riding. You guys can just hang out for now. You start moving towards Beijing since you're fully healed. Okay, time to go. Thank you for this wonderful arrangement, Nabunaga. My second spearman will be done in one turn. Send him up with the other. I really want to get this library done. Hiawatha, you're in my way. Hello, barbarians. And I actually have quite a bit of gold on me. So... I'm going to buy an archer to provide support for my spearman. Okay, now Hiawatha wants to be friends with me. Okay. I have no issues with the diplomatic penalties I will get for attacking my friends. Even brute beasts and wandering birds do not fall into the same traps or nets twice. Really? Because the AI in this game seems to. A lot. Let's send out my army towards Beijing. Carefully avoiding this barbarian encampment. Because I don't want to beat up my spearmen for no good reason. And research the wheel so that I can start getting Min more units. Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. He wants a declaration of friendship. I will agree to that. Because now I get more great people. Thanks to the Nobel Prize, which for some reason gives me great people. I'm not sure why. Let's advance my army. Hopefully this is enough force to put a nice dent in Beijing. <laughs> and there's a barbarian naval unit, but I don't really care. Start making a wine plantation. And let's move these guys in from the north. Advance the bulk of my army in from the south. Let's make more units. 